Hey church, it's me, Chip, and it's so great to be almost finishing this week of devotions where we are asking the question, what if? I hope it doesn't sound too controversial, but we're asking the big question a bit like Marvel did for all their characters. What if some of our Bible characters made different decisions? What if it was different people exchanged for others? We started the series asking what if Saul fought Goliath instead of David like he should have done because the Bible says he was taller. He was a giant. He was a shy giant, but he was a giant. Then we asked what if Lot's wife hadn't looked back and turn into a pillar of salt? What if she kept her focus? And then yesterday we were asking the question, what if Zacchaeus had been born taller? You know, we might not have the story of Zacchaeus, the wee little man climbing up in the tree. And so today, as promised, we're gonna be asking the question, what if Mary, the mother of Jesus, when Gabriel came and said, this is what's gonna happen, what if she said no? (laughs) What? This is what the Bible says. Thankfully, she didn't say no. Luke chapter one, verse 38. She said, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. But let's just imagine, right? What if scenario, uh, Gabriel's like, you've been chosen to give birth to the savior of the world. And Mary responds, "Uh, nah, you're all right. (laughs) What then? It's both hilarious and eternally devastating at the same time. Here's the bigger point that I'm trying to make. Are there areas of your life, and I'm asking myself, are there areas of my life where we've just decided these areas are off limits to God? Do we sometimes think our plans are somehow more important than his I've been a follower of Jesus for a really long time, and i found that he seldom does things the way I think he should. And yet, in hindsight, I can say without a doubt, his way is always better than mine. More likely than not, he had a much bigger purpose in mind that involved me learning patience or trust or just surrendering to his will. So, as today's devotion, let's just have a moment together where we decide in our heart to make Mary's words our own. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Of course, there's echoes of Jesus there in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, not my will, but yours be done. If possible, let this cup pass from me. He was saying, I don't wanna go through the torture. I don't wanna go through the pain. I don't wanna be separated from you. And yet, even above all of that, like his mom, Mary, He said, not my will, but yours be done. Can we make that our prayer as well today? Decide that nothing is off limits to God. Surrender even those areas that we love. We're just clinging on to him so much. Actually give them up to him. I want to encourage you. I struggle with it as well. So let's do this together. Jesus, if there is any area of my life that is not fully surrendered to you, God, I do it now. I let let it go. I lay it at your feet. I'm sorry for trying to hold, uh, hold back the access all areas into my heart and into my life. My heart is deceitful above all things. Would you replace my heart of stone with a heart of flesh? And receive, I receive you full access. I'm thinking about that verse in Revelation where it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, we got to open that door all the way. It's not just a little crack. We've got to open it all the way. He says he'll come in and he'll eat with us and we can have a meal. We can have a conversation. Let's have those those big conversations with Jesus. Right. I'm in preacher mode. Uh, We've got one more of these what ifs coming up. We're going to ask what if Abraham settled too soon? So I'll see you tomorrow for that.